Think of a porch swing and what comes to mind? Lazy afternoons relaxing and reading your favorite book while enjoying the cool breeze? Maybe talking with friends? Well, whatever your thoughts, a porch swing is the perfect spot to relax and unwind. Let me tell you, I am all about comfort when it comes to chairs and benches and porch swings, and this is one of the most comfortable porch swings I've ever had the pleasure of sitting on. We'll start by making the seat frame. The key to it are the uh, seat supports. Now, the real trick to making the seat supports is to make them all exactly the same. The plans come with detailed measurements, so once you draw them out on one of your blanks, these are 17 inches long, they are one by fours, go ahead and nail that template to the other two blanks. That way, when we cut them out, they'll all be exactly the same. Use a jigsaw or bandsaw to cut out the seat supports, and remember, it's always a good idea to cut just outside the line. That way you can sand down to it. You can't always add more wood back. Now that our seat supports are cut out, the rest of our frame consists of a back and a front. Now where do we get these measurements? Well, the back is essentially the same height or width, if you will, as the rear of the seat support. So we want to have that nice flush line right there. The front, and here's where I varied from the plans just a little bit, instead of a standard one by three up here on the front, I've added a little bit of an angle onto this cut. That's basically just a continuation of the seat support there. That kind of eliminates a gap. Where do we place these supports? Well, the center one, we're going to measure and install it right in the center of the front and rear. The ends, however, are going to be spaced using our arm supports. So what we'll do is we'll attach our uprights here to the ends of the front and rear, and then we'll butt our seat supports right up to those. Use waterproof glue at each connection. Make sure the arm supports are perpendicular to the seat supports using a square. Then fasten the arm supports with four fasteners. Repeat the process for the other three arm supports. Next, install the seat supports, snugging them up against the arm supports. And remember to check for square every so often during the building process. Now that our frame is pretty much complete, we want to start adding the slats. And this is where I varied from the plans again once more. Uh, Instead of all of the slats being the same length, in other words, from end support to end support, I've cut the first one just a little bit long. I want it to wrap around these arm supports. So I'll just notch around there, I'll mark with a pencil and then use a jigsaw to cut that out. And it's also just a little bit wider because I want it to extend all the way up to that first measure point on the seat support and just a little bit below that uh, front rail right there on the frame itself. Measure and mark the location of the cutout on each end of the first slat. Then use a jigsaw to cut that area completely away. Make sure to angle this cut so that it fits snugly up against the arm support. Use a round over bit to smooth the long edges of the slat. Then spread an even layer of glue along the length of the seat frame. Use at least two fasteners at each end of the slat and a couple in the middle as well. Next, round over the edges of the rest of the slats and begin installing them. Be sure to line up the slats tightly with the neighboring slats. Use a clamp to close up any gaps. Continue this process until you're within a few inches of the rear of the seat frame. You may have to custom measure and cut a slat to fit this space perfectly. Once all the slats are installed, set the seat assembly aside and allow the glue to dry. Use a square to mark the location of the 90 degree angle cut on the bottom of the back supports. Again, cutting them both at the same time ensures accuracy. All right, now that our two uprights are cut out, what we'll do is connect them to the rest of our back frame. That consists of basically one by threes here. Uh, what we're going to do is attach them to the top support, and then we'll attach the bottom support between the two uprights. Here's a tip if your frame pieces have a slight bend or twist in them. To keep everything nice and tight, try clamping a straight edge to your work surface. I'm using a scrap of hardwood flooring for the job. 
clamp the upper frame rail to the straight edge before you attach the back supports. Use glue and at least two fasteners at each connection. The bottom frame rail should be attached 8 inches below the top rail. Okay, now that our frame is nailed and glued together, I've gone ahead and cut the slats. Now, I varied from the plans again here. They call for one by fours. I've used one by sixes, but I've also cut those one by sixes into varying widths. This is purely aesthetic. If you want to go with the one by fours, that's fine. Uh, what I've also done is routed off the edges, the two sides, and the bottom of each slat. The most important slat we'll install is the first one. I've measured the center of our uh, top and bottom supports here. I've also measured and marked the center of our first slat. So I'll go ahead and attach that one, making sure that they line up. That way I don't have to worry about measuring the rest of them. I'll just butt them up against the, uh, the first one here and nail them into place. Install the first slat using glue and nails. Make sure the back frame is square before you attach it. Then just butt up each additional slat to the one before it, in the same way we installed the seat slats. Also like the seat, when you reach the end of the back, you may need to custom fit a slat. Just remember that the edge of the last slat needs to be even with the back frame to ensure a tight fit when we attach the arms. When it's finished, your back should look something like this. To make that nice graceful arch on the back, I'm just using piece of scrap wood that's nice and flexible. I've put clamps at either end of the back to give that piece of uh, scrap just a place to hold on to basically. And my last clamp is going to be used here. They're just about in the center of that center slat. Now we have this nice graceful arch. And all you have to do is trace along the curve using a pencil. Then use a jigsaw to cut off the scrap. Follow that with a light sanding to remove the rough edges, and finally, the roundover bit to soften the length of the arch. When you're done, use small clamps to hold the back in place against the seat section. Then mark the locations of the screws near the bottom edge of the back supports. Use a Forstner bit to create countersink holes for the 3.5 inch galvanized screws. This will also let them get more gripping power into the seat bottom. Drill pilot holes and install the screws. Be careful not to over tighten these fasteners or you could crack the bottom of the supports. That's not good. And I've varied from the plans here as well. The plans call for one by four arms. I'm using sections of five quarter inch deck board. Three cuts we need to make on these pieces. They're 26 inches long. The first is the radius on the front. Just give it a little round over. You can use a paint can, your favorite method. I just used this container I happen to have sitting in the shop, lined it up with the front edge and drew around it. That's number one. The second detail is on the back. The plans call for a little cutout back here and literally you can just freehand it. Very simple to do. Last, because these are a little bit wider than 1x4s, I'm going to notch around the back so that it's, it connects nice and snugly up to the back section. So that's about an inch in and just as uh, deep as this uh, back section is wide. Once you've measured out the cuts and drawn them onto the blanks, cut both arms at the same time on the bandsaw or using a jigsaw. Remember to attach them face to face since you're really creating a mirror image for the opposite arm. When notching out the rear of the arm to fit around the back, make sure you angle the forward cut so it fits snugly against the backrest. Temporarily attach the arms by drilling pilot and countersink holes about a half inch from each side of the armrest supports. Snug them into place with a single screw in front and back. Now drill a 3 8 inch hole in the front and rear arm supports where they connect to the seat frame. Loosely install an eye bolt in each location with washers and nuts. Measure and mark each arm directly above each eye bolt. Then remove the arms and drill one inch holes at these locations. Next, use the roundover bit to soften up the cuts and curves 
Then reinstall the arms using glue and screws. For a nice finishing touch, use decorative wooden buttons in the screw holes on top of each arm. Now once you have all four eye bolts in place and the holes drilled through the arms for the chain, you'll need four lengths of chain that are about three feet long and these little adjustable links. They feed through the eye bolt, the chain feeds onto them, and then you can simply lock them closed. Connect the other ends of both chains using an S-hook. This in turn is used to connect the swing to the support chains hanging in your favorite spot. Then all you need is a good book and a cool drink. Thanks for watching and remember to check out realoutdoorliving.com for more great projects and how-to videos. Wood, it's real.